In this step, we're going to confirm that our Arduino is working properly uh, by using the battery and the little battery wire that comes in your kit, using that to power the Arduino without a computer. So let's connect up the battery to the wire, like that, and then we'll connect the wire to the Arduino on the connection here. Now after a second, we should see two lights activate. Uh, this green one here marked on shows that the Arduino is getting power and this one here marked L should turn on for a second and then off for a second. On and off. This blinking program is actually preloaded onto the Arduino microprocessor when it comes from the factory. So if you can build this little circuit and confirm that we see the yellow light blinking on and off once per second, uh, then you're done with this step. In this step, we'll confirm that your Arduino is getting power from the USB plug from your computer. So the USB plug here that came with my kit, uh, the other end of it I've plugged into my computer, and now I have this end free to plug into my Arduino, like this. So again, I see the, uh, the, the green on light turn on, and the uh, amber L light turning on and off every second. That confirms that everything is connected up correctly to the computer. Okay, to use your computer to program your Arduino, the first step is to install the Arduino Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, software on your computer. So, we're going to download that from this website shown here, arduino.cc. When you bring that up, click on Software, and then go to Downloads. And then we're not going to use the Arduino Web Editor because, uh, in my experience, it's not quite as reliable as the, the actual IDE. So instead, I'm going to scroll down here to where it says Download the Arduino IDE. And then I'm going to click on the, uh, the right link for my particular computer, be it Windows or Mac or Linux. This is a Mac, so I'm going to click on the Mac OS one. And then it comes up with a request to consider donating money to the Arduino folks. But in this case, I'm just going to click just Download. And that's going to start the process of downloading that file to my computer. All right, after your computer's finished downloading the Arduino IDE, on a PC you might have an installer that you have to run. On a Mac you just get the app right here in my downloads folder, so I'll drag that into my applications folder and there it is. All right, so uh, sometimes the first time you run the app, you might get a little security warning like this and I'll say yes, go ahead and open it. And shortly I'll be rewarded with, there we go, the basic uh, Arduino startup sketch here. Now uh, this gives us, as you can see, a couple uh, starter functions to begin with. Uh, here uh, is the declaration for the setup function, and as this little helpful comment here shows, any code that's in here is your setup code, and it's there intended to run once and only once. So when your Arduino powers up after we write this code to it, uh, all the code that's here in this setup function, uh, which is between these two curly braces there and there, all that code will be run once, and then the Arduino will launch into running all the code inside of this loop function, which is declared here. So there, the hint is this comment here. Put your main code here, what you want to run repeatedly. So after running setup once, it will launch into running the code that's between these two curly braces shown there. So uh, that's uh, Arduino setup and ready to run. All right, we're going to write our first Arduino program together. So uh, I've set up my computer here the way I like to have it when I'm writing these Arduino programs. I've got my uh, Arduino IDE over here. That's uh, We saw that previously when we first ran the program. That's just the little uh, starter uh, program that it gives you with the setup and the loop function declarations there ready to edit. And then over here in the browser, I've got up uh, arduino.cc slash reference slash en. This is uh, the language reference for the Arduino programming language. And so this is here for easy reference. I can see all the various functions, uh, variables, structures, and things that we'll use in our program. Uh, I'll refer to this when I try to remember how to write the program that I'm going to write. Okay, so the first thing is to confirm that the Arduino is actually communicating here with the IDE. And the step to do that is to go back over here to our Arduino IDE. And up here in the menu bar under Tools, and I'm going to look down here at Port, and I look across at the serial ports that the program detects, and it, you see some entries here, and this will look different on your computer. This shows the things that I have on my computer. So, for example, this is an entry for my wireless headphones, and this is another Bluetooth thing. But the key thing is, looking at the serial ports here, I don't see anything labeled Arduino. Uh, nothing looks familiar. So that means that 
the Arduino has not been detected by the IDE yet and in fact that makes sense because I'm looking at it right here and it's not been plugged in to my computer so now I have it in my hand and I'm gonna plug the uh, the USB cable into the Arduino I've not connected anything else to the Arduino and this Arduino is just as it came out of the box so there's no uh, no custom program on it yet it's still running the program that flashes uh, the little yellow light on the front of it and that light is flashing I can confirm so that shows that it's working correctly now if I go back up here to tools and port I see that there's a new entry here under port and I can scroll over here and see it here as well so you see the difference before I only had these three entries under port but now I have a fourth one and it's selected automatically uh, USB modem blah blah but the key thing here is I can see it says Arduino Genuino Uno that means it has successfully found my uh, board I also uh, can look here under the board and see that there's a check beside Arduino Genuino Uno. So that means that it has found an Arduino. In particular, it's found uh, the Uno type of Arduino, and that's clicked there. Uh, that should probably be selected by, uh, by default automatically, but if you're having problems, you might want to look under the board and make sure that you see Uno selected. And look at the port and make sure that you see uh, a port here selected that says something Arduino related. If you don't see that there, it's not going to work. Okay, great. That's all ready to go so I'm here uh, ready to write my code so I'm going to uh, use uh, the, the the LED that was blinking one second on and one second off by default my first program is going to be to change that so that it blinks faster instead of one second on and one second off I want it to blink uh, very rapidly and that will replace the little default program that the Arduino comes with I'll replace it with my own custom program and that will be my very first program that we're doing so I'm gonna add some stuff to the setup function and then I'm gonna add some stuff to the to the loop function here which is where the actual blinking will occur. So let's start. For the first thing in the setup, I need to tell the Arduino uh, that uh, pin 13, I know that that little yellow LED on the board is connected to pin 13. I just know that. And uh, we're going to configure pin 13 to be a digital write pin. Uh, the pins on the Arduino, the digital pins, can function as either a read or a write. They can be an input or an output, depending on how you configure them. Uh, if you're trying to control something like an LED, that means it's an output, because you are outputting a signal, a voltage, to the LED. And uh, Now, if we were reading data into that pin from, from something else, uh, then we'd configure that pin as an input. So, like I said, we're controlling an LED right now, so we're going to configure that pin as an output, and we do that using this pin mode command. So if I had forgotten that, I can look over at my language reference here and I see under digital input output, I get three commands to use. We're going to use two of these today. And the first one here is pin mode. Let's click on that. And it tells us that it configures the specified pin to behave as either an input or an output. That's exactly what I want to do here. And so here's the syntax. So I'm going to write that code here. I could copy it over, but I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a believer in, in typing it myself so that I, I learn it by, uh, by hand a little bit better. So I'm going to type pin mode, capital P, little P-I-N, capital M-O-D-E, like that. Uh, open parentheses. I told you the pin number that is internal in the in the uh, in the Arduino connected to uh, pin 13, uh, connected to the yellow LED is pin 13. So I put a 13 there, and then I need to specify the mode. And here it tells me that the mode my choices are in all caps input, output, or input pull up. Uh, we won't talk about input pull-up yet, but input and output are, are kind of self-explanatory. If the data is going into the Arduino, we make it an input. If the voltage or whatever is going out of the Arduino because we're controlling something, we want it to be an output. So clearly in this case, I want this to be an output. O-U-T-P-U-T, -U -T, in all caps. And now I also need to remember that every line, uh, except the, the curly braces here that start a new function, every individual line in an Arduino program needs to end with a semicolon. If you forget that, don't worry. It'll throw an error at you and it'll remind you to put it there. Okay, so that's my setup code. I put it up here in setup because I only wanted to do that once, right? Uh, this is basically telling the Arduino up front at the very beginning that we're going to use pin 13 and we're going to use it as an output. I only need to tell it that once. It'll remember that for the rest of the time. I don't need to put it in the loop here. Uh, that would be silly. So I have up here configured pin 13 to be an output and that's actually all the setup I need to do. Now here in the loop, where the code lives that keeps being run over and over, that's where the blinking will go. Now I can write a, uh, a little line of code here 
going back to the uh, to the language reference, I can remember what the command is. If I remember it, great. If I don't, it's this one here, digital write. That will write a high or a low value to a digital pin. High means 5 volts or on, and low means 0 volts or off. Okay, so here's the syntax for that command. Digital write. Let's type that up in here. So lowercase d digital, and then uppercase w write. Open parentheses. And now the two um, parameters to uh, specify for this function are the pin number and the value I want to write to that pin. So I know the pin number from before. It's still 13. It's the same pin that I configured up here. So let's put 13 there. And then the second parameter will be the value, right? So your choices for the value are high or low. So if I put high here, and then I remember my semicolon to close it, what's going to happen when I run this? Well, it's going to set that pin high, which will light up the LED, and then it will repeat this loop, and so it will set it high again. Of course, it was already high. And then it will repeat again and set it high again. And of course, it's still high. You see the problem? We've turned the light on, but we're keeping turning it on. Does that make sense? You're basically sending a command to it saying, turn on the light, turn on the light, turn on the light. <laughs> You're never saying to turn off the light, right? So long story short, this won't blink. If we run just this code here, it will turn the light on, and it'll keep trying to turn the light on, but it will never turn off, so the light won't blink. That's not what I wanted to do. I said I wanted it to blink. So that means... I need to obviously uh, send uh, another command occasionally that says turn the light off, right? Uh, blinking means on, off, on, off. So let's add that command. It's the same command as the first one. It's digital write. Still using the same pin number. That's 13. Now the only difference is instead of sending a high value, we're going to send a low value, telling it to turn the pin off. So now we have blinking, but there's one thing missing. Uh, without any control over the timing of this loop, it's going to run this loop as fast as it can. And the Arduino is actually pretty powerful. It can run this very fast. It'll probably run it so fast that I won't even see blinking. I might just see a, a dimly lit LED, but you won't see the individual blinks. So to control the timing of this, I need to tell it to wait for a certain amount of time at certain points in the code. In fact, at two points in the code is where I'm going to tell it to wait. Uh, and, and then I need to figure out what the waiting, how do we tell it to wait? So let's go back over here to our reference. And I'm going to scan through this and look for something that has to do with timing or something about waiting. There we go, time. So under the time uh, heading here, I see a number of functions defined. Delay, delay microseconds, uh, micros and millis. I know from, ex from my experience from before, I know it's the delay function is what I'm interested in. What does delay do? Well, it pauses the program at that point in the program for a particular amount of time in milliseconds. And that number of milliseconds is, is the parameter to the function. So there's what it looks like, delay in milliseconds. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, yep, yeah, looks good. In fact, here's a little example code that's very similar to what, well, that's suspicious. It's very similar to what we're writing over here, but eh, we're not going to look at that right now. We're writing this ourselves from scratch. Okay, so uh, at, I know from before that this line here will turn on my LED, and then I want to wait for a while so I can see that the LED is on for a period of time. So that's where the first delay will go. So D-E-L-A-Y, the parentheses open, and now the property, uh, the, the parameter that I'll pass to this is how long to wait in milliseconds. Uh, right now, you remember the program that it comes with, it stays on for one second and off for one second. So I can tell you that that program that it came with looks like this. That would delay it and it would stay on for uh, a thousand milliseconds, which you remember is one second. And then I need to tell it to shut off the light. And then I need to have it wait for a period of time while it's off. So that's another identical delay statement. And then it will, the loop will repeat itself. So does this make sense? Let's step through it and understand. And hopefully you'll believe that this is exactly the program that your Arduino came from the factory pre-programmed pre with that caused that little yellow light to blink on and off, uh, on every second and off every second. So the instructions are to turn the light on by writing a high signal, 5 volts, to digital pin 13. Turn it on. Then wait for 1,000 milliseconds, which is 1 second. Remember, while you're waiting, it remembers the state of this pin, right? That light will stay on while we're waiting and doing nothing for 1,000 milliseconds for one second. Then, after you're done waiting, then use another digital write command to turn that light off, to write 0 volts or, or off or low to pin 13. Then, while it's off, we're going to just do nothing 
for another second, for a thousand milliseconds, right? So this, if I ran it, I have confidence would basically repeat the same behavior that the Arduino came with uh, from the factory. Now, the only bad part is, if it looks the same as it did from before, then I can't tell if my code is working or if the code that came on the Arduino is working. So instead, I'm going to change the timing. I'm going to remove a zero from that delay statement. And I'm going to remove a zero from that delay statement. Now, you agree, what we've done is sped up the, la the, the loop quite a bit. It turns the light on, and then it only waits for 100 milliseconds, which is only a tenth of a second, before turning it off again, and then waiting another tenth of a second. So whereas before the loop took two seconds per, per loop, right? One second after turning it on, and one second after turning it off. Now the loop takes two tenths of a second, or a fifth of a second per loop. Uh, just a tenth of a second to turn it on, and a tenth of a second to turn it off, right? So I'm looking it over, I double check in the setup. I'm going to configure pin 13 to be an output, which is correct. And in the loop, I'm going to constantly turn it on, wait for a tenth of a second, and turn it off, and wait for a second, and then repeat. So that looks good. I have confidence that this is working as it should. If I want the Arduino to check it, I can check this little check mark up here that says verify. Before doing that, it's going to ask me to save it. So I'm going to call it something and save it to the folder there on my computer. And uh, I ch after I can run verify, we see some little results down here. And indeed, I see no colorful errors here. Everything looks as it should be, and it worked uh, correctly. So now I'm ready to upload it to my Arduino. So uh, it is still plugged in like it was before. If I want, I can double check under Tools and look back at my port. And yep, I see it's still there and still checked. Very good. So let's hit Upload. And you'll see it go through the process of uploading this to the Arduino. There, that was it. It says Done Uploading. So uh, on a slower computer, it might take a little while to go to it. But it works just fine on this one, and in, a, in about a second, it uploads the new program to it. And in fact, as I look here and switch over to a different video to show you what the Arduino looks like, I can see the same yellow light that was blinking before. But now, unlike before, it is blinking much faster. In fact, uh, five times a second, because it's on for a tenth of a second and off for a tenth of a second, and there's enough time to do that five times in one second. So we've successfully accomplished it. Okay, I want to show you quickly uh, an error that can happen sometimes. It actually happens pretty often, and I want you to be aware of it so you know how to fix it. So here I have the program that I just finished writing that uh, made my LED blink a lot faster than the basic program that came uh, loaded onto the Arduino. So I'm all ready to, uh, to run it. I can click Verify, and uh, it compiles, and I don't see any error messages down here. And then I click Upload, and this happens. The bottom here turns red-orange, and I see an error occurred while uploading the, the sketch, uh, blah, 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 serial open can't open device. This is nine times out of ten uh, easily explained and caused by uh, something going wrong up here where the port is. You see, if I go back up here under tools and look at the port, nothing is checked anymore. Uh, there's still an entry here uh, under Arduino Genuino Uno, but it's not selected. And this happens when sometimes you might unplug one cord and plug in another one and the computer reassigns uh, the address of the port. Um, it sometimes just seems to happen at random, but it's an easy thing to fix. When you get this error that it says that it cannot upload the sketch, be sure to go under Tools and Port and find again the, the port that your Arduino is connected to. Uh, click that one. I can go back under here and confirm that, yeah, now I see it listed here, and I see it with a check over here, and now if I hit Upload, it should work. And indeed it does. There, done uploading, and now my LED is blinking again as I expected. So that solved the problem. So if you ever encounter that problem where you uh, have trouble uploading your sketch, even though the Arduino is connected to the USB port, remember to go up here under Tools and Port and confirm that a port with an entry say, saying Arduino uh, is checked at that location. That should fix your problems. Thanks.